Okay, so Sarah, you said you participated in rodeos before, but I thought only men ride horses in rodeos. Yeah, like 99.9% .9 of the time, the men do all of the rodeo sports. There's like two sports for women, and the rest of them are all for men. Oh. When I said I wanted to do the traditionally male events, they said, you can't do that. You're a woman. You have to do these other events that are not dangerous. They're safe. For example, the men do calf roping. You work with a baby cow, a calf that's about 100 pounds. The women do goat roping. Oh. And they work with a tiny goat that's about the size of a small dog. So I just always thought the difference was stupid. I don't want to do the easy, safe event. I want to do the difficult event. And people were really surprised. And first they said, you can't. And I said, I'm going to anyways. Wow. And the first time I did the saddle bronc, they said, look, look, look. We got you a girl horse because you're a girl. Oh, my. And I thought, well, you didn't need to draw more attention to it. I just want to compete like everyone else. Right. And my first time, I fell off the horse and I was really injured. And I was laying there and one of my friends came running out. And he said, I thought he was going to help me up and help me leave because I was really hurt. And instead he said, hurry up, you gotta get off the, you gotta get out of the arena because the next person wants to go. Oh, wow. And I was really happy that he said that actually, because he was just treating me the way he treated any other competitor. Oh, get up, be tough, you're fine. Yeah. And I didn't want anyone to so help he me. he didn't help you. Right. And I, I was really glad that he was treating me like everyone else. And when you see a rodeo, you'll see that the women do events where they can dress really nice. They always wear nice clothes, beautiful hat. They even have earrings and things on. And when the men do events, they're doing the events that they really have to use their muscles and get dirty. And I really liked doing those instead. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying I liked to do the other one, and I think that maybe other women like to do the other events too. So do you think is the situation is improving? Are more girls joining rodeo now? I don't think so. I think the sport of rodeo is becoming less popular. Oh. So I think in the future there won't be more women in rodeo. There will just be fewer people in rodeo. Oh, I see. Because the the rodeo events, they're not very kind to the cows or the other animals. And as people get older, maybe they get more soft-hearted, like me. And they don't want to make the animals get tied up or chase the animals. And mm. so I think fewer people are interested in rodeo these days. So, so we've been talking about women's roles in society, and are you a stay-at-home mom or a working mom? Well, I guess I'm both. Um, right now, I'm on maternity leave, and I'm on month six of maternity leave. What does that mean? So, maternity leave is when you have a job, but then you become pregnant or you're going to have a baby, maybe adopt too. So you're going to have a baby and so you take time off of work to stay home with the new baby. Oh, I see. Do you still get paid? I do. I get about half of my wage. So I do still get paid and I'm very grateful for that. So I've been at home with the new baby for six months. And I'm going to go back to work next month. 
Oh, what will happen with the baby? So I have two kids, actually. I have a toddler and a baby. And both of them will go to daycare during the day. I see. So I signed up for the daycare before the baby was even born. It's really hard to find good daycare that you can afford, that's near your house. So you have to start planning before the baby's even born if you're the type of person who wants to go back to work. I see. I don't think many men worry about getting good daycare for their children when no. they think about their jobs. No. Even when there's a family and the mother and father both work, still it's the mother that has to do everything with the kids, usually. Usually the mom has to, for example, get the bag ready for the kids to take to daycare. They have to arrange the daycare. They have The daycare has the mother's phone number, usually. And so the mom has to do a lot of extra work even though mom and dad both have full-time jobs. I see. Are you saying that things should be different? Yes, I think things should be different. I'm so lucky. My husband agrees with me. And my husband, he drops the kids off at daycare and he picks them up and he does the laundry and the dishes. And it helps me to be... And it helps me focus on my career so that I can stay late at work if I need to. I can go to an extra meeting on a weekend. And it makes me feel more fulfilled that it's not my husband's job that comes first. A lot of times women make less money than men and they put their job second to their husband and... It's not equal, and it's not fair. And so I think that people should work on making things more equal. Well, I agree with you. Thank you. So I was thinking about my, my current job, mm -hmm. and I think, like, My work schedule is, is so good. Yeah. I work Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Then I have a day off. Mm -hmm. Then I work Thursday and Friday. And then I have the weekend off. And I get five months holiday a year. Wow. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what's a good work schedule for you? I think what you've just described sounds really good as well. When I was younger, actually, I don't know where this idea came from, but my ideal... Work hours were nine till two. Okay. Not nine till five, like you usually mm -hmm. hear in a lot of Western countries, but nine o'clock to two o'clock. Right. I don't know. So maybe for me, if I could do it, if I could find something like that, mm -hmm. it would be really good. Because you can sleep in until maybe seven or eight, yeah. <laughs> go to work, finish at two, still come back and have a good chunk of yeah. that day to do other things. So yeah, so my previous job was quite... I started at 9.30 mm -hmm. and I finished at 12.30. Oh. I worked five days a week, mm -hmm. but it was great because work was finished by lunchtime. Wow. I had the whole day free. Mm -hmm. And that was a good job. And you still got a full-time salary? And that was a full-time salary. Wow. Yeah. Sounds even better than this one, yeah. maybe. In the past, I've, I mean, I've worked in restaurants where you work only in the evenings. All right. So I'd start, I'd start at 5.30 and work until around midnight. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that as much. Because all day I was thinking, I've got to go to work later. Mm -hmm. So I think I prefer working in the morning and get it behind me as soon as possible. I think maybe I'm the same way as well. Mm -hmm. I prefer to get it done and then have the rest of the day to enjoy. Also, I had a job where I was working uh, during the week and weekend. Mm -hmm. And I would have Mondays and Tuesdays off. Right. And I didn't really like that. I missed uh, seeing friends yeah. on the weekend and yeah. going out. So I don't think I would like anything like that. How about not working? Do you think how long do you think you could go without not having to work? 
Well, it's funny because this job now, I have really long vacations, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm not happy when I'm not working. <laughs> like, my wife gets very frustrated with me because mm -hmm. if I have nothing to do, I tend to be a bit annoying around the house, okay. just getting depressed mm -hmm. and just arguing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't need much work. Like if I could just do like an hour a day, I okay. think that would be enough <laughs> to make me happy. Okay. How long could you go, would you say, a week or two without having to touch work? I, I could probably go a couple of months. <laughs> okay, without having to work at all. Yeah, if, if I had the other things to do. All right. You know, so if I had other projects, like if I was doing a lot of training for running or if I was studying, if I, I had, a, you know, a good book. I see. Then I could probably go quite a long time. Yeah. I get pretty restless myself too. Mm -hmm. I think after three, four days of not having anything to do, I, I just want to, <laughs> I really need something. Maybe, right. like you said, study yeah. or learn or go out and do something. Have a project, have mm -hmm. a goal. I think, yeah, my personality type is need to constantly do right. something. Yeah. Produce, produce, yeah. Yeah, when I worked in Europe, I used to do. I used to teach for one or two weeks intensively mm -hmm. and then have three or four weeks off. Oh, wow. And it was it was quite nice because I had lots of free time. But yeah, after two or three weeks of free time, I was quite looking forward to the next block, the next block of teaching. Mm -hmm. But teaching these intensive blocks can be quite, it can be quite tough as well. Like right. after, like I did a six week block in Russia once. And after three weeks, I just wanted to go home. <laughs> <laughs> six weeks was too long. Wow. How intensive was it? Well, the job in Russia was really intensive because we I was living with the students in a in a residential university. Mm -hmm. And so we had breakfast together and then I taught them from half past eight in the morning till half past six in the evening. Wow. We had lunch together and then we had dinner together in the evening. Wow. And there was one bar on the, <laughs> in the university and we all went to the same bar in the evening as well. And you had the same group of students? The same group of students. For six for weeks. Six weeks and it was six days a week of teaching. Wow. I can, if you, the teacher, felt like that, I can only imagine how the students must have felt. They mm. must have wanted a break. Yeah, we all, we all wanted a break. <laughs> So, Rory, talking about schedules, mm -hmm. do you ever think that life is too busy or too much, that we're trying to fit in too many things? Maybe for some people. Not not for me, actually. Huh. I, I, I take quite life quite slowly. But I notice with my daughter mm -hmm. that we're always sort of rushing her to do things. She, when she comes home from school, she has to do her homework. Mm -hmm. And then one night a week, she has to go to swimming. Then she has piano. Mm -hmm. Then she has, uh, like, an acrobat lesson. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, we did nothing after school. You know, huh. We went to the park by ourselves and played, but nothing was scheduled, I so see. we just did what we wanted. I see. So do you think, like, kids today, they try and, we try and make them do too much, or they try and do too much? That's a really good question. And I, I think, yes, you're right. It feels like a lot, that, that we expect a lot more from kids mm -hmm. these days, whereas, similar to your background, too, when I was growing up, I felt sometimes that I was bored out of my mm -hmm. mind because there was just nothing really much mm -hmm. to do except for maybe go to the library and borrow some books and read. Right. And I had all the time in the world to read them. But these days you see kids running around trying to do it all, mm -hmm. play soccer or some kind of sports or do some club activities or just something. They're, they're always busy, the kids yeah. I see around me. Yeah. So I think we're trying to make them maybe grow up too quickly or do too much too soon when i was a kid you just sort of you found your own path hmm. you know when you became a teenager when you started to go to university you started to make these choices but now parents seem to okay the kid is going to do piano and they're going to do soccer and they're going to study hard for their you know for their exams they're going to do extra math tuition i don't know if if kids can handle it i don't know either it, it, it also seems that it comes with our world today it's mm -hmm. a lot more competitive yeah. And what I've heard is like people are trying to prepare their kids as much as possible. I've heard for some universities you need to show that you can handle a lot. Right. And because everybody's in the same place, mm -hmm. they're all racing for the same positions that if you don't distinguish yourself in some way, mm -hmm. you can't make it. Mm, so yeah. in response to that, parents are trying to 
pile as much on on the kids as possible. Yeah, I was reading something that said that uh, employers really look now for th- extracurricular things that kids do. So not just their grades, mm. but what clubs were they members of? Okay. Were they acting in the theatre? Were they a member of a sports team? And wow. these these other things seem to be becoming more important now than just schoolwork. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a shame. I like the way I grew up. Mm. Yeah. I like if my kids could have a bit more freedom. Yeah. But I can also see that yeah. with the way the world is going, mm-hmm. I would probably be anxious for them to to do as much as possible so that they can have the best yeah. in the future. Yeah, I guess it's a balance between giving them the freedom and then giving them the opportunities to to go. excel at, at various things. That's it. So, Todd, I heard that you're from San Francisco, and that it's really expensive there, maybe, to live. Is it? Is that true? Yeah, it's ridiculously expensive. It's obscene, actually. <laughs> um, it's so hard to, to, to get other people to realize how expensive it is. You have to actually live there, mm. and then you, you can experience it firsthand. But basically, you know, your average small apartment is a minimum a minimum of like three thousand dollars a month wow that sounds really expensive well so i don't know much about the san francisco area is that like just in the main downtown part or anywhere in the city it's actually yeah it's pretty much the entire peninsula um Mm. and the high pricing the high pricing affects all of northern california and the reason is because uh companies like um facebook google Apple, Yahoo, Cisco, all these really big, rich, rich companies pay people a lot of money. And so there's a lot of money in San Francisco for the tech world. And that just drives up the prices for everything. Mm. So everyone who lives there, like, must be pretty rich? Yeah, so it's a very high income. I think the average income is over $100,000 a year or something crazy like that. So, yeah, it's a lot. So if apartments are $3,000 a month, what about houses? Houses are ridiculously expensive. Uh, so your average house is probably, in San Francisco, a really small rinky-dink house can go for almost a million dollars. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That sounds yeah, impossible. That sounds obscene. <laughs> um, yeah. Years ago, I worked on a construction crew, and this was 15 years ago, and we were just renovating or painting a very small little shack. I mean, the house wasn't even that big, and it was going for a million dollars. Wow. Yeah. So when you were working there, were you living in San Francisco also? I was. And that's actually why I became a teacher in Asia, why I moved to Japan, because we were losing our lease on our apartment and I had to go find new housing. And not only is the housing expensive, but even if you have the money, you might not get a house because you have to go through this long process. It's almost like getting into college. Mm -hmm. You have to go through this interview process, and just going and finding an apartment is such a complicated process in San Francisco that uh, I thought, oh, forget it. I'm just going to... I'm going to take the easy way out and go back and start teaching overseas again. (laughs) So if someone were interested in living in San Francisco, what would your advice be? Uh, Don't. (laughs) (laughs) Or uh, make sure you have a lot of money or you have a really good job. I guess there are ways around it. You can rent rooms Mm -hmm. um, and things like that. But um, it's doable because there there is some low-income housing. Mm -hmm. And if you live in the outskirts and if you are going to commute into the city, you could probably find something around one thousand five hundred dollars a month, uh, but still, it's pretty expensive. So work for Google first, then right. move to San Francisco. <laughs> exactly. Make sure you get that job at the tech company, and then um, once you have that job, then then you're set. Great. Well, thanks for sharing about San Francisco. Sure. So we're talking about housing, Meg. Um, You know, these days a lot of people can actually stay in houses when they travel. Like they don't stay in hotels. They stay Uh, in a house. Uh, Have you heard about Airbnb? Yeah, I have heard of it. I've looked at the website a couple of times. Do they have Airbnb where you're from? Uh, They do. They actually do have Airbnb in San Francisco, but I've not used it in San Francisco. I've only used it actually traveling in in other countries. I used it in Thailand Mm. 
and I was going to use it in Japan, but I ended up I couldn't use it because of travel problems. But yeah. So how does it work? Basically, what it works is if somebody owns a house, they can rent out a room,、mm-hmm. and so you find the house online, and then you book it with the scheduling system online, and then you pay Airbnb the money, and then、um, the people let you stay in their house. What are the costs usually? Is it expensive? It can be really cheap or really expensive. You have both ends. I mean, sometimes you can just rent a room, and sometimes you can actually rent the whole house. So.、Um, You know, and, and now in places like Thailand or other places in Southeast Asia, what they do is a lot of condominiums now are kind of turning into mini hotels.、Oh. So rather than try to find long-term tenants,、uh-huh. they just search for or they just rent out their apartments on Airbnb. Right. Well, it sounds like a good way to stay someplace you haven't been before. It is good. I mean, when I used it in Thailand, what I liked about it was you feel like you have a real, you know, you have real roots there. You're not in a hotel, so nobody's.、Mm. Kind of intruding on you, or nobody's coming to clean your room every day,、um, so you feel like you have more privacy,、yeah. and you feel like you really live in the place.、Mm-hmm. And usually, that your apartments are in real neighborhoods, so they're not in touristy areas. So there are definitely some advantages. Would you say that it's safe? Yeah, I guess that's the biggest concern.、Um, it seems to be safe. I mean, from what I see,、um, although there was an interesting case recently in California where they've had problems of squatters. And a what are what are squatters? <laughs> Squatter is somebody who they take the Airbnb house and then they just never leave. Oh. Yeah, and then they're hard to evict. So that was one interesting thing. And then also recently, the company's been in the news because people that have low income housing, like government subsidized housing,、mm-hmm. they've been trying to、uh, rent out their apartments on Airbnb. On Airbnb. <laughs> And then the city or the government said, "Hey, you can't do that because we give you this house at a discount to help you because you're low income,、yeah. so you can't use it to make a profit." So it's been a very debatable situation. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like double dipping.、Yeah. You're, you're getting discount or paid in a way to live there, and then you want to get paid more. So it sounds sounds like a problem. Yeah. So what, what what do you think? Would you be interested in doing something like Airbnb? Yeah, I definitely think so.、Uh, after researching a place, maybe if it had a lot of pictures and it seemed clear that it would be safe, and、uh, yeah, I think I'd like to do it. And actually, their website's fantastic. Like, if you go to their website, you can, let's say, choose a house in Paris or Madrid or whatever, and then they often have like the Google Street Cam thing,、oh. so you can see what the house looks like on the inside, and then you could actually do the rotating camera and see what the neighborhood、uh. looks like. And then everybody leaves reviews about the owner and about their stay there, so you get a good feel about what the place is like. So it's kind of a new way to travel, and it's kind of cool.、Mm, yeah, it sounds interesting, especially the reviews. I think knowing someone else has had a good experience, I would definitely be interested in doing it. Yeah, definitely. Hi Sarah. Today we're talking about lifestyle options.、Um, so my first question would be: Would you rather live with a roommate or live by yourself? This one would definitely depend on who the roommate is. I've lived alone many times, and I've also had lots of different roommates. And I found that any roommate that's extroverted does not work well. Um, with me,、I、find that like if I come home and they're there, like I don't want to be there, so I leave again, or I just go in my room, close the door. I think the worst situation was when I lived with my sister. She's very extroverted, and we were working the same types of jobs and spending a lot of time together. And when I came home, I just wanted to be alone, and so I would go in my room, and she thought that I didn't love her, didn't want to spend time with her, but really, you know, I just needed my space, so. In that case, living alone is better. But if I have someone who's more similar in personality to me, then it works well to have a roommate. I currently have a roommate, and we get along really well because we have similar temperaments, and so yeah, works well for us. So, would you say that opposites don't attract? When it comes to living together, absolutely not.、Hmm. How about、uh, your living situation in terms of、uh, a house or an apartment? Which one would you prefer? Definitely an apartment. 
because to me a house seems permanent and I love change so I also move a lot I've moved to a new place um, every two years or less for like the past 12 years of my life so um, the thought of having a house and being stuck in one place uh, doesn't really appeal to me Hmm, I can understand that. Um, this apartment of yours, would you prefer to be in the city or in the countryside? I would naturally say city, but ironically, most of the places I've lived have been more countryside or rural, because um, that's where I found work. But in the future, I think I would like to live in a larger city. Any cities in mind? Uh, not right now. I'm still trying to decide about what country I want to move to next. How about this apartment of yours in the city? Would it be furnished or unfurnished? Interesting you ask that, because the apartment I'm currently in is uh, unfurnished. And when I moved here, it was really complicated to try to furnish it, because I live on the fifth floor, and there's no elevator and um, became quickly very problematic when I moved in trying to get things. But when I was coming, the apartment agency that I was dealing with told me that there weren't any furnished apartments in the area where I lived, so I thought it was the only option, when really it wasn't. Yeah, the fifth floor, you, you must have got some good exercise carrying all that stuff up there. Definitely. Mm. How do you feel about pets? I love animals. I would love to have a dog or a rabbit. When I lived in China, I had a rabbit. Um, but it's just not practical for my life because I live overseas and I go back and forth between the states, visiting family, and it's just not practical to have one. So maybe one day if I ever settle down. A dog? Rabbit? Probably a dog. Dog would be first option, definitely. A dachshund, my favorite animals. Oh, dachshund. those are those are cute. Yeah. 